an e-bike powerful enough to inadvertently pull the front end up while riding off-road. And with looks to match the gutsy performance, this is a bike from a new brand to me, Happy Run. It's right up my alley, a blend of a couple of different bike styles. Happy Run calls this the G60, but the box said Tank G60. They also call it their SUV. And the headline on their site has called it an electric motorbike. I see in it some moped styling mixed with some dirt bike blended with the guise of an e-bike. I filmed this right out of the box for you. I even got it to this point without peeling off the peely bits that some people like seeing removed. Two of them are on the displays, one of which is perched on top of the moped slash dirt bike style handlebars. Or should I say sport utility vehicle? Let's go over the components and you'll see what I mean. This isn't a standard e-bike. For starters, on those moped or dirt bike bars, a twist throttle. Next to that, a green button. That's the selector button for the three pedal assist settings, which is a new location to me. There's also a shifter for working through the bike's seven available speeds, if that's what you choose to do. The display, it's a color display, loaded with indicators and sensor readouts. It has all the important stuff and some extra things, like turn signal and high beam indicators. More things I would expect to see on a motorcycle. So is this keyed ignition switch. It turns on the other display, well, both displays really, but that second display, it's a real-time display for the bike's battery voltage. Beside that, a multi-function switch, not for the pedal assist settings, we saw that on the right-hand side. These switches control the headlight, or the headlight high beam, and those arrows, they work the rear turn signals, which show up great in person, and there's also a functioning brake light and a late edit here. I just found out if you press both the arrows, it enables a hazard light. The horn button, self-explanatory. See where I'm getting the moped or dirt bike vibe and why they call it an SUV? More examples, look at the suspension fork. An aluminum alloy suspension fork, I could see this on a small motorcycle or a moped scooter. It's more robust than the average e-bike fork for sure. Mounted to it, the headlight, which features running lights and a high beam capable of lighting up the path far better than it shows up here. No wonder it needs cooling fins. Very robust up front, a perfect fit for one of my favorite wheel sizes. This features 20 by 4.0 fat tires. You know, I like those little knobbies. They're actually in line with this bike's capabilities. Tan sidewalls to match the saddle and mag wheels front and rear. Both wheels shrouded by matte plastic fenders with a glossy racing stripe for speed. That's a joke, but the fenders aren't. Nice and solid, no rattles, even off-road. Stopping those knobby fat tires, that's handled by hydraulic disc brakes. These feature an easy adjustment dial. The rotor's 160 millimeters, labeled 160E. The E means these are classed for e-bikes. A good thing for a bike that weighs 90 pounds, and these are hydraulic e-bike brakes front and rear. A quick look at the bike, one of the most visible parts is the frame. Easy to look through, but not to look past because it's a chromoly steel frame. An open tube design that I think is super cool. Probably the most attention getting part of this frame is the rear shock assembly. And yes, this is a dual suspension bike. That shock at the rear, it's fully adjustable. The other obvious standout, the battery, easy to access in this open frame, but it's also out of the way. There are built-in indicator lights on the battery and a switch beside the charge port. This can be charged in or out of the bike. Removal is a cakewalk. The G60 comes with two sets of keys that are visibly different, so you know which one to use for the ignition and which one goes with the battery. It comes easily out of the frame, so you can take it with you if that's required. The important info can be seen here. This is a 48 volt, 18 amp hour battery. I've been able to get 20 miles going throttle only around town. Happy Run claims 30 to 68 miles per charge. Obviously, to get the higher numbers, you need to be in a pedal assist mode, which means you will be pedaling. The pedals are mated to the usual crank arm and large e-bike chain ring combo. Sensing those pedal revolutions is a bottom bracket mounted cadence sensor. If you choose to go the pedal assist route, you're maybe going to shift every now and then. For that, there's a derailleur and a 7-speed 14 to 28 tooth freewheel. But I know you're not looking at that, you're looking at the real action, which happens here. At the motor, this is a 48 volt, 1500 peak watt motor. On paper, that's a gutsy amount of power, and I can tell you that it does relay well to the pavement. Where the bike is, well, fast. Rated top speed, 31 miles per hour. Now, here's the unique thing about that. This bike will do its rated top speed up to 31 miles per hour in throttle only. So you just twist the throttle and go up to 31 miles per hour on flat ground. 
If you do choose to pedal, now these moped style e-bikes are usually kind of awkward when it comes to pedaling. This one is still wide, but my legs are in prime pedal position. So this is usable as a pedal bike. Again, not the case usually on these e-moped style bikes. 31 miles per hour in pedal assist 3, but also achievable throttle only. Which in my opinion is where the bike really shines, but right up to 31 miles per hour either way. And those E-rated rotors and those hydraulic brakes, they can slow and stop this bike quite well, even from top speed. In my time reviewing e-bikes, I've discovered that most bikes can hit a top speed, but many can't maintain it. Many bikes don't have the torque to hold even a decent clip up small hills. Here the street goes from flat to a small incline. This bike barely slows and then quickly regains speed once I'm back on the flat. It's also just great as a rideable bike. The geometry feels good. It'll bite into turns. Those fat tires give great traction. And that suspension system, you're not going to run into anything on city streets that it can't handle. And that's both the front and the rear suspensions, which you can see in action here. And I got some odd looks getting the rear suspension shot, but it was worth it. It also backs up the claim that Happy Run makes when they call this an SUV. It's not just for city streets, you can actually take this bike off-road where it also excels. Flying over dips and absorbing bumps, top speed off-road a bit slower, 26 miles per hour which is enough for plenty of fun, and off-road this handles every bit like a small dirt bike. It would definitely be capable of riding green trails on a mountain bike trail, but this is a 90 pound bike. Ride respectfully when you ride off-road, ride this in proper areas, pretty much everywhere but mountain bike trails. Streets, dirt roads, gravel roads, grass fields, even sand, then back to city streets. A true sport utility vehicle in my opinion. City ready, right down to a tag bracket being included on the bike out of the box. Maybe a little future proofing there. Also off-road ready and off-road comfortable thanks to the good suspension system, the strong frame, and even the seat being comfortable. They call this PU vinyl, also known as vegan leather. It looks nice and I can tell you off-road seated riding, I don't have any complaints. From my perspective, this bike has the performance to back up the sporty look and it's a bike that appeals to my love of e-bikes, my love of mopeds and scooters and my love of dirt bikes. Happy Run calls this an SUV, they call it an electric motorbike, an e-bike, the Tank G60, or just G60, whatever you want to call it, I'm impressed. Especially at the current price point, which I'll put in the title, honestly, I thought this was going to cost eight or nine hundred more dollars than it does. So it impresses my wallet senses too. I'll put a link down in the description so you can take a look at it on their site. That's my look at the G60. Comment below with your thoughts. And if you have any questions, I'll have this for another week or so before it gets donated. I'll be happy to answer any questions that I can. FYI, this bike also comes with a full tool set, a manual, even a small tire pump. Everything needed to get it on the road. Check Check the description for links, thumbs up this video that always helps the channel, and thank you for watching Kev Central. Have a great day.